Welcome to Conquer Myasthenia Gravis 2016 Fall Meeting Presentation entitled Myasthenia Gravis and Medication. We gratefully acknowledge the support of our video sponsor is XL Care. Our speaker today is Mitra Habibi, PharmaD from the University of Illinois at Chicago College of Pharma. Dr. Habibi is a clinical pharm pharmacist. She works with physicians to coordinate care and medicines for patients in the hospital. She also teaches at the university. So we are going to talk about drugs that can, can cause your symptoms worse, the symptoms of myasthenia gravis worse. And the way it can happen, which is if you think about that, that's your muscle, and the nerve has to tell this muscle, has to release this chemical, which is called a neurotransmitter, and it's going to tell your muscle move. Um, something is not right there, right there with myasthenia gravis. I'm sure you already know that. But what happens is other drugs can cause problems anywhere in this area, in their before the, this chemical release or anywhere in between or after. So there are some drugs that are known to cause problems, and I'm going to name those for you guys, and the majority of drugs are just suspects that we think or patients have reported that it caused their symptoms worse. Before I get there, have you guys heard about this terminology, black box warning with medications? So the black box warning is basically some medication can have, and it's the most serious, the strongest warning from FDA for a medication. Um, it, it happens either while the drug is going through their studies that are getting approved through trials, that patients who are volunteering to participate in this drug, um, manufacturing of the drug, they report adverse effects. And by the time the medications come to the market, we already know that this medication causes adverse effects A, B, C, and D. Some of them are very dangerous. That's why the FDA gives them this black box warning. And the reason that it's called black box, because as soon as you open up the prescribing information for this drug, you, you see a box right in front of this uh, prescribing information. And sometimes it's post-marketing. What does that mean is that patients take the medication and it's in the market and patients start complaining about adverse effects and then the FDA goes back and gives this warning. As I said, some of them can be dangerous and life-threatening. When we use this drug, we use these drugs. We have black box warnings. We use them. But you always weigh the risks versus the benefit for the patient. And when the uh, FDA has given this black box warning, it basically forces the physician to sit down and have a longer conversation with you and tell you about it and give you some papers, uh, information about this drug in lay language that, that a normal consumer patient will understand. And it may make your myosin gravis worse. So these are the two, uh, but actually I put it here because this is the FDA language that they talked about two different sets of anti antibiotics. And this is the language that the FDA used that said drugs like Cipro may cause worsening of myasthenia gravis symptoms, including muscle weakness and breathing problems. Patients should call their healthcare provider right away if they have any worsening of this weakness. So for patients who have myasthenia gravis, we will avoid this medication because it has this black box warning that we know it's going to happen. The other one is actually contraindicated in patients who have myasthenia gravis is this other uh, antibiotic. Somebody who has myasthenia gravis should not be given this medication. And this is the language that the FDA chose. Fatal and life-threatening respiratory failure reported in patients with myasthenia gravis with this medication. It says that fatal and life-threatening respiratory <laughs> failure reported in patients with myasthenia gravis with KEDEC, which is the antibiotic. So that's the FDA language. For that reason, if somebody has to be treated for an infection, no one is going to choose this medication. It's completely contraindicated in patients with myasthenia gravis. Not all antibiotics, certain antibiotics. Certain antibiotics. Again, this is the class that we know that they have the black box warning against them, drugs like ciprofloxacin, levofloxacin, gatifloxacin, and the list is very, very long. 
So again, they have been associated with flares of myosinogravis. These were post-marketing reports that patient who took it and had myosinogravis, they reported it. So as I said, FDA has issued a warning to avoid this class of medication in patients who have myosinogravis. You shouldn't be on it, you shouldn't take it. Another class of antibiotics that have been shown uh, to worsen myosinogravis symptoms are aminoglycosides. These are very long names. Probably you have heard them. Gentamicin is a very old medication. Amicacin, gentamicin, canamycin is about a long list. And it can cause neuromuscular blockage. That, that connection between the nerve that has to tell the muscle to move, it can cause problems with that connection. It has shown to cause problems with breathing if people have myosinogravis, so called respiratory depression. So broptobromycin, probably the weakest one that it can cause problems, but as a rule, these medications, class of medications should be avoided in patients who have myosinogravis. Another class of antibiotics called macrolides, again, z -pack. I'm sure you guys have heard of Zitromax z -pack. yes. There's another class of it, it's very common, it's very commonly used that it should be avoided, if at all, uh, in patients who have myosinogravis. I already talked about this medication, Ketek, um, that I put it in green because it has got the contraindication specifically for myosinogravis. There have been reports of, reports of fatal, have rife listening respiratory failure in myosinogravis patients who took it. Condomycin may worsen myosinogravis, and I have a list of the ones that I haven't shown much problems, like sulfonamide. Maybe you have heard of it, Bactrim, or penicillin, or polycinin derivative drugs, like amoxicillin. So there are antibiotics that can be used for myosinogravis patients, and there are classes of antibiotics that shouldn't be used for myosinogravis patients. So the key is that, obviously, every time I'm sure you do this, when you go to see your physician or other physicians or they want to treat something that they do know that you have myosinogravis. And when I was looking at this, the biggest class of medications that had problems with myosinogravis were antibiotics. So know that if somebody is prescribing antibiotics, you tell them, make sure it's not from the classes that I'm not supposed to be on it. There have been some reports about antifungal, um, antiviral medication also causing some problems with myosinogravis. So, as I said, always check, discuss before starting an antibiotic or any other new medications. Never ever use somebody.